Welcome back. So in this session, we're going to look at unit step and impulse responses. So in this question, we ask you to find the unit impulse response to these two equations, x dot plus 2x equal f of t, and 2x dot dot plus 27x dot, oops, it should be a 7, plus 7x seven dot plus 3x equals f of t. In the second part, you're asked to find the unit step response for the first equation. So here, the key points are really to remember what do we mean by unit impulse and unit step response, which initial conditions correspond to these responses, and what functions of f of t do you choose in each case. So why don't you pause the video and work through this problem, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. So let's look at a, the equation A. So the unit impulse response is simply, and I'm going to write this down, unit impulse response, is simply the solution to the following problem, to our differential equation, x dot plus 2x that we're given, with the forcing in a delta function of magnitude 1, with rest initial conditions. which means in this case that x of 0 equals to 0, x of 0 minus is equal to 0. So how do we go about solving this equation? So here, first of all, let's look at what this means. This equation could be modeling, for example, the quantity of a radioactive chemical in a tank. And delta t here means that we are, we are giving a high disturbance on a very short time on this system. So for example, dumping a huge amount of chemical in that tank, and then just letting the system evolve after dumping all that chemical in the tank. So really, what we could see is that the delta could be identified to, to the x dot, which is the highest derivative in the system. And that would then mean that we have a jump in the second highest derivative, which would be an x. So delta t introduces a jump in x. And what do I mean by that? is that we, have, we had rest initial conditions initially. Now we have to go into a jump where the quantity in the tank was raised to 1, which is basically uh, the magnitude on the right-hand side and the fact that we have no coefficients for the highest derivative in the system. So basically, we can solve this equation by solving the equivalent problem. x dot plus 2x equals to 0, which is just the homogeneous part, with our new initial conditions. x of 0 minus equals to 1. And so here, clearly from before, we saw that this solution would be a decaying exponential. We would have constant integration here, which would be just 1 given our new initial condition. So this would be valid for t larger than 0. And given that we started from rest initial conditions prior to the disturbance introduced by the delta, we could also write this with a u of t step function if we were to consider t in r. So if you want to look at how the solution would look like, we would have basically rest initial conditions and then a jump introduced by our forcing, and after that, just a decaying exponential and a jump here to a new initial condition of 1. So let's move to the second problem. Now we're dealing with the second order differential equation. 2x dot dot plus 7x dot plus 3x equals f of t. And we are asked, again, to seek the unit impulse response to this problem. So the unit impulse response is simply the solution of 2x dot dot plus 7x dot plus 3x equals, again, the unit impulse means that we're just kicking the system with an impulse or delta function. And we're starting from rest initial conditions. So here, let's just look at what could this be modeling? So this could be just basically Newton's second law with an acceleration 
and forces applied to the system. For example, it could be a mass with, uh, hanged on a spring with certain damping due to this term. And this delta here would have basically the units corresponding to a force that would be felt by the highest order term in the integral, which could correspond to the acceleration multiplied, for example, by a mass of, of two. So really, the delta introduces can be identified to the highest order derivative, which means that we would have a discontinuity from 0 to 1 on the derivative 1 degree lower, so in x dot. And so the delta introduces a discontinuity on the second highest derivative. And what I mean by that is that we have a jump from our original initial conditions of x dot 0 minus equals to 0 to new initial conditions x dot of 0 minus equals 1 half. Where did this 1 half come from? It came from the fact uh, that I have a factor of 2 in front of the highest order derivative. So if I'm identifying this with delta, then integration of this term would give me an x dot that corresponds to the jump from 0 to 1 over 2, so 1 half. So that's where it comes from. And each time that you would have a coefficient front of your highest order derivative associated with the delta on the right, you would have a jump of 1 over that coefficient. OK, so from this point, what are we solving? What do we need to solve to get the unit impulse response? It's equivalent to solving our new system, where we can then get rid of the delta with our new initial conditions, dot equals 1 half. And of course, here I didn't mention, but the initial condition on x0 minus 1, because we need two initial conditions for the second order derivative, would still be 0, as the discontinuity would not be felt by the, the function x itself. So we can go ahead and solve this problem. So we, we use the characteristic polynomial as we did before. This characteristic polynomial would have a discriminant of 25, which give us simple roots that we can compute. So it would be minus 7 plus or minus the square root of the discriminant over, over 4. So we have two roots, minus 7 minus 5 over 4, minus 12 over 4, which is minus 3, minus 7 plus 5 over 4, which just gives us minus 1 half. So we can write down the solution to this problem as c1 exponential the root that we just found, minus 3t, plus c2 exponential the other root, minus 1 half of t. Now, to get c1, c2, we need to take into account the initial conditions. So the first one tells us that x at 0 is 0. So that will give us c1 plus c2 equals to 0. So basically, c2 equal minus c1. And the second initial condition tells us that the derivative is 0. So that gives us minus 3c1 minus 1 half c2 equals to 0. Here we have that c2 is equal to minus c1. So we can just factor out everything. And we end up with 3 minus 1 half. Oops, sorry. Here it should be 1 half, our new modified initial condition. Equals to 1 half. And here we would have fifth half equal to 1 half. So c2 equals 1 fifth equals minus c1. And so plugging in c1 and c2 in this formula would give us the general solution with c2 exponential minus 1 half t minus exponential minus 3t. And all of this, remember, we're solving for t larger than 0 in our modified system with our new initial conditions. So this is for t larger than 0. And again here, if we wanted to just write it for t in or r, then we would, could just add the step function u of t that would just signify that we took rest initial conditions before x equals 0 minus. OK, so that ends the first part. So now quickly, for the second part, we're asked to find the unit step response the unit, uh, 
yeah, the unit step response to the first system. So the unit step response is just the solution to our original ODE problem, x dot plus 2x. But now f of t is the step function, hence the step here, which still rests initial conditions. So really, the step function is just 0 everywhere before 0 minus, and it takes the value of 1 after. And so basically, we can just solve again for t positive. the modified differential equation with u taking just the value of 1. And here we just get a similar root, so it would be a minus 2t, but then we would have a constant integration to worry about. And a new particular solution, a lucky guess would just be a constant, and that would give us a 1 half from 1 over 2. Okay? So then we would just need to seek the c1 that would give us x of t equals to 0 at 0, because in this case, we don't need to modify the initial conditions. They still remain the same, the rest initial conditions. And so we would get here just c1 equal minus 2. Uh, equals minus 1 half, sorry. And so we would have 1 minus exponential of minus 2t. So just here, something I forgot to mention. What could this be modeling? So this could be modeling, if I go back to my analogy of the the, the radioactive chemical in the tank, this would be telling me that after a certain time, I start inputting at a steady rate, at a constant rate of U of T, of one per unit of time, the amount in the tank, and then looking at how the system evolves to that. So there is no abrupt change that introduces a discontinuity. Uh, so just to conclude, I just want to sketch this solution just so that you see the difference between the two. And here, what we have, uh, again, I could have introduce my u of t here if I want t in r. So here we have again a solution that is 0 before. It's, there's no discontinuity. It's still 0 at 0 minus. And then we have basically a solution that is growing until it reaches an asymptote of 1 half when this exponential goes to 0. And so you can see that it's a smooth transition because I just started inputting the amount of the chemical in the tank and at non, in a non-abrupt way. So this concludes this session. And the key here was to really remember what do we mean by initial, by the unit step response? What type of f of t are we talking about? What initial conditions do we need? And same thing for the unit impulse response.